ritual refinement of naproxen racemic mixture using GSAS2. Part 1 Prelab video. So, naproxen. Uh, naproxen is the active pharmaceutical ingredient uh, for non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Okay, so this is naproxen molecule as you can observe here, okay? Uh, uh, certain information about pharmaceutical molecules is that FDA requires that all medications uh, in the market must contain in their, as their active pharmaceutical ingredient uh, enantiomeric pure form. In other words, only one enantiomer can be present. No racemic mixture can be present in a medication. So, particularly in the example uh, of naproxen, the enantiomer that is desired to be present in the medication is the S enantiomer. Uh, and so, this proves that it's very necessary for the pharmaceutical industry to be able to distinguish between the types of enantiomer or distinguish between the S enantiomer and the racemic mixture. Uh, another important information is that the naproxen itself is very insoluble in biological medium, okay, or in water in general. So to increase the uh, solubility of naproxen and how it's delivered, uh, one of the strategies is to use naproxen sodium, okay. So basically, uh, the naproxen molecule is deprotonated and the proton is replaced by a sodium plus ion. An example of naproxen sodium is the medication Aleve, okay, which is uh, manufactured by Bayer, uh, and it's basically the uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient is simply naproxen sodium, okay? And naproxen sodium can be found in different hydration degrees, such as the anhydride, monohydrated, or dehydrated forms. So the technique that we're going to use in this experiment to uh, distinguish between the racemic mixture and the S enantiomer of naproxen, and later to distinguish the hydration degree of naproxen sodium, is called Ritfield refinement, okay? So it's basically, it's a refinement technique. Uh, in other words, it's not like a structure determination technique from the scratch. Instead, we need an initial model, and then from that initial model, based on the parameters provided by that initial model, we perform some operations uh, regarding parameters related with the structure of the material and the instrument in such a way that uh, we minimize things in such a way that until we find agreement between the experimental data and the model it generated from the initial model. Okay, that's how it works. Uh, the Ritual refinement, one advantage from uh, over doing simple calculations using Bragg's Law on Excel, like we've done in the previous experiment, is that Ritual refinement is a whole pattern fitting technique. So what does that mean? So basically for every single point that was collected in an X-ray diffraction pattern, the Ritfield is going to calculate uh, a simulated intensity for that, okay? So basically, it's not something that considers only the peaks and the peaks position. Instead, the whole pattern is considered on that, on that range, okay? Complete the whole pattern. In that case, um, it tends to produce a more accurate and a more reliable result because it takes account of every single point both either from the background or from the peak or from the mid of the peak and um, anything okay so every single point collected is being considered in this adjustment 
Uh, there are a few ways we can use to assess the quality of the refinement. Uh, the way that is more immediate is the visual way. So basically, uh, on this figure here, we have like a plot of the Ritval refinement. So basically, we have in black, the X-ray diffraction pattern in black is the experimental data. Okay, that's the data as it was uh, collected in the equipment. Then we have superposed to the black uh, pattern, a red pattern. That red pattern is basically the calculated X-ray diffraction pattern, okay? So how does that work? That's this red pattern is the pattern that was generated by performing the steps uh, established in that certain Ritveld refinement, okay? And then here in gray, very close to the background, sorry, it's went too high. So in gray, very close to the background, what we have here is uh, the difference pattern, okay? That difference pattern is the difference between the real uh, and the calculated pattern, okay? So ideally, what you look for in a visual uh, assessment of the quality is to make the red uh, pattern, so like the calculated pattern, as close as possible of the experimental pattern. And one way they can observe that is to make the difference pattern, the difference between them, as minimal as possible. So that's the most immediate way. So the visual um, clue, okay? Besides the visual way, there are quantitative parameters that you can look for to help us to decide if the refinement quality is good or not. The first one is the RW or RWP, okay? So basically the RW is the summation of the difference of the intensity of the um, <clears throat> observed, so the experimental pattern minus the intensity of the calculated, and then that is going to squared. We have this W, it's a factor, okay? And you do the summation of the square. And then we divide it by the summation of the observed intensity. And then you take the square root of uh, this ratio of summations. So the goals of the RW is to do a minimization of the error between the experimental and the calculated. That's pretty much the goal, okay? To be done on that. And from there, uh, what, uh, so interpreting on that way, we can understand that to assess the quality of the refinement, our goal is to have the RW as small as possible, okay? So as you see the RW progressing and getting smaller and smaller, it means that the refinement gets better and better. And a second parameter that you can look to is what's called the goodness of fit, okay? The DOF. Uh, the goodness of fit is basically as represented here on equation 2. Uh, it's basically the ratio between the summation of the minimization for each point, okay, divided by the difference between the number of the points and the number of parameters, and then the square root of that. So the goal of the goodness of fit is to be as close as possible to 1. Okay, so uh, the software that you'll be using to perform the Ritveld refinement is the GSAS2, okay? So it's a free software, uh, you can download that on this uh, link over here. This is the icon for the GSAS2, and this is the screen of the GSAS2. Uh, how what you're supposed to see when you first open that when you don't have anything open So during the synchronous part, we'll be working very in-depth with the GSAS2 calculating things from there and From the results from the RW the goodness of fit the visual fit We will be able to distinguish to identify which unknown corresponds to which 
either to racemic mixture or to the S enantiomer of naproxen. The experimental parts of the experiment, okay, how the experiment is supposed to proceed. Uh, so the part one is kind of like simple, it's very similar to what you've done in the experiments one and two of the semester. So on part one, students simply are going to receive two unknowns, okay? So one unknown X-ray diffraction pattern would be for the racemic mixture, and the other unknown would be for S enantiomer. Then students are going to go to the crystallography open database to download the CIF file for the racemic mixture and for the um, and for the S enantiomer. So what they're going to do from there is so they're going to take the CIF file to Mercury and simulate the X-ray diffraction pattern, and then by a direct comparison. Okay, looking directly uh, to the simulated pattern and the, v and the unknowns, they simply are trying to do an educated guess uh, to figure out which enantiomer corresponds to each unknown. Okay, they can make an initial guess. This guess can later prove to be right or wrong. Okay, and the proof of that guess would would be either right or wrong, will be done on part two. So the part two is the identification of enantiomer by the Ritual refinement. So the part two is the first Ritual refinement performance by itself, okay? So on part two, that's where students are going to start to use the GSAS, okay? So they're going to take each unknown and for each unknown students are going to do one refinement using the CIF file for the racemic mixture and one refinement using the CIF file for the S enantiomer okay so there will be a total of four refinements and for each unknown the students are going to prove based on the quality parameters the visual assessment the RW the goodness of fit uh, which one is the most appropriate enantiomerically form for each unknown, okay? Then you have part three. So part three, uh, we have a complementary analysis using uh, infrared spectroscopy. So they're going to cut, they're going to use the infrared spectroscopy to collect the spectrum of each unknown, okay? And then they're going to correlate after they have identified each unknown, they're going to tell in the infrared spectra of which are the similarities and difference between them, okay? And how that, uh, that IR spectrum explains being a racemic mixture or being a S enantiomer. And then the fourth part, students will be working with a commercial naproxen sample. So students are going to receive a pill, okay? Uh, then that pill was crushed and then was collect um, the X-ray diffraction pattern of the pill, okay? So basically of the crushed pill. Uh, and then on that part, students are going to receive the CIF files for the unhydrated and the monohydrated forms of naproxen sodium. And they're going to perform both refinements for that pill, for the pattern of the pill. And then they're going to figure out if that pattern represents a uh, uh, a hydrate or a monohydrate pill, okay? So that's what's supposed to be done on part four. This is the end of our pre-lab video. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something useful. Uh, see you next video. Bye-bye.